if you're not familiar with the tournament format, just a very quick one. Two games in the opening game play each other. Winner of that game, this one, advances the upper bracket of the main event. That easy. Two teams in your region. About to find out in the three, which two teams remaining. does exactly that. The winner bracket, upper bracket, main event. Yeah. Still far. That's a long still way. Still a long way to go, but it's still a good We play two games. Reserved. You're in the main event. Bracket. Brilliant. Jacob, I who like is a part of the famous station of EG. <laughs> <laughs> is it mainly getting a view, or was something even more than that? They still retain the buff, the universe. I don't know why. Like Wow. you in the Dota This <laughs> man has awards for, you know, teams. Spin up to Winter Wyvern. Yeah, qualifiers. Wrecked. That's almost as. You have to turn to Kyle to get into a team. <laughs> Nothing weird. We, had, we didn't have DP Dragon or Winter Wyvern in previous games, so this would be a different strat. Like, uh, the other. Teams were very drats, drow, and the second was weaver shins, basically. And uh, twice for the EG, rather than that, which we in game three from EG, and uh, similar bands, I think. So the win for Virtus Pro actually was probably the first one to really make zero into a very rated uh, support pro, and prize for them picking up that early. Did that? Not really, uh, not with the, the bands, with. I like the. Gotta pick up from Unisys again. Gyrocop, like the surprise, but now all three games. So early on with the for me, like Virtus's Virtus Pro's lineup, more feeling things out. Mm -hmm. This is the first of, a, of a very don't do any easy. When I G's first two, it sort of makes sense. You're the dire side. You want to hear that can run. That's what the can provide for you. And B, you want to can contest the lane and get control of the radiant jump. As fast as possible, because that's the biggest difference I think in the rate players that when you. Even not the only thing that I can provide. That oh, you're... it's just ridiculous, yeah. but it is one of the big benefits. Now you don't have to pick any hero that has to. Because Gyro is typically a one position that can go for the Roche, but Slaughter are into one that can. Uh, Gyrocopter, you're pretty much just. We want to take an enemy's safe lane of the as fast as possible, because this is a. Just do it for a minute. And you protect lot against if you're aggressive trialing like that because you can leave your character a bit in a 1v1 situation and you pressure it and sometimes you can get a soul. And well, just puts up so many synergy things. You grab a hero that does physical damage and they be carry. So Jaro, known for his match in the early game, can just hit decently when the Slark game. So pick a lot. I think is probably one of the best heroes in the game right now. Five seconds remaining. Don't think you're going to get an argument from this. Nope. It's Smart not man. Ready. Two, five seconds stun, ten second cooldown, second cooldown, sir. That's amazing. Not too surprised to see the Quap get banned by EG. And the same thing, ban out Pro. Mm. Also, again, support picked up as yet. Out of the draft, they've picked up support to Fear. They're already in pick. I'm a bit worried right now that the Bane and the Undying is move there's a whip being picked up by bro a lot of these uh are stables for g are you seeing the in their support since it's a newer for them not that it hasn't done in the past but maybe all the heroes they're probably because they've only months of practice versus like six i don't think that's uh, intentionally in it but but we've got the pick up from evil because they're suddenly to do so because they denied themselves the option to Pick up that early throw. Hmm. There's still the on the pull in defensive sense, and that's something that you look towards when you're a hero like the Winter Wire. Make sure that your cores aren't just throws. I mean, he's still in the pool. It was a very competitive pick in the last uh, first round every single two games. Um, I don't know if you pick it though if you're on the side of the You really do supports. Like, well, a is not defined, but I mean, 
weak to save, I'd argue, yes. Cold, cold feet and, um, the Wyvern old, cold feet as far as, I mean, I can counteract those by using and things like that. Surely an ice with spring is a huge, scary that Slaughter has to do. I really think it's one of the best the patch right now. Good versus right. Gyro. But defense, I didn't mean to much as just, you don't really have a huge team. You don't have reliable, I should say. Right? Yeah, with the Dark Star, really lack of I think Virtus Pro is about right now, is it worth going for these fans or should we on the off lane? As Austin was saying, it's a lot to Really, the, the strongest hero in the game. They've already picked it for themselves so to get one. They've the picture. The, top the top. picture, part of your data, but it won't necessarily be reverse. We just saw it, sure enough, huh. but it might be as well. So you could be Slot or Gyro Mid, something like that. I think that is up there late. Pretty much. Oh, you're right. I think that far. This is, this is I stick to League of Legends. <laughs> I actually really like work if you didn't already have the turn to pick. I, I really well against your but you can lock down who embraces well. make sure that they are longer than four kind of a thing. I really like to break up band. Like it's one of the uh, has seen the most comfortable when the the four combo as well more I'm heroes. It is the A. Ooh. So I do is I mean, would the is going to be quite but ganking game is real weak, yeah. Yeah, I can feel that. That it's not really vertical for anyway. A team that goes to gaming. So I don't think it's a surprise, but leave them a little bit in the ganking because cold pretty good fights, I guess. But when it comes, you're roaming around her ass, but the winter wyvern. Which do you think we're looking to get here? No of them. <laughs> like we we to the uh, so one over is rushing castle and supposed to be predicting service. pick Virtus Pro every time. <laughs> I love to <laughs> Russian could have... <laughs> Dragon Knight. Genius they picked that game. Pick. Um, and they picked a drow. So I don't know if drow. I think the drow game if Sardar, you know, it's too down. Um, if you just typical Dragon Knight head span. Breathe fire. He uh, treads drum to a BK. But he may alter his sense. I really think they do a drought. Definitely need something with old sable piece of that. Uh, there's areas that usually have sables, but maybe is is ridiculous. I he likes picking it. It's a real setup. Kind of combos with. I think already kind of that. you that like he high ground here with in the DK and one is good. To set up in a because it's the he, it's not off on a year, it's really to take the fight after that. Because the winter wipers are your vacuum, but they group automatically that hero. And, so I didn't see uh, the game VP. Uh, what what, what did they have with uh, Skyrath Mage and Spirit Breaker? Okay, they, they have they, um, they have a flame in a pain, I think, and a mid brood or the dual. They were against the Earthshakers, wrecked the two, their two supports. Crystal Maiden picking out for me. I actually like it's uh, It's not picked that often. Do people really positioning himself? Gets off passing ultimate. Seconds. Has had some good cape usage, probably pre. And you can't let all the ice here. So. Yeah. I would like to see either a genius hero from geniuses or can push back way. In conjunction with the win rate, power shots, so, picker, not, these are that I could see evil picking up. So I, I think well, it was fear, the Nagas at ESL look ass move hmm. as when A playing it, but yeah. that's just been a transition. I really hope, like, if you choose between those, I really hope it's another. Yeah. So, bro, they still have. They could just continue down the route, trying to go for the fight. As soon as possible. They've already broke the DK. Pick a load to me. Just clear active gaming. The push as soon as you. Yeah, and then. Really like. Berserker here. Fall for you. He's like a 
about it, they'll have pretty in five and they'll be able to hold their <laughs> this talked about their uh -huh. is always so a little bit funky. This is actually how they get the most is they got the eventual eight minutes into the game they are they like probably kills a hit snowball like Illidan he hit level six he'll he'll up to to planer kill their enemy carry. They do it every time the, the tower they they got it down to form with with this around spirit. You know, they actually banish second round games. Yeah. And I think so this is the way they figure it. That that do a strong early mid game as well. Get so much potential with the old. they have unreliable stun range. Good ways to set up. Okay. Draft is in four games. Okay, we are live here. I'm LD. We're joined by Danny. Ben, your question twins. He didn't have the courage to print the game to add a draft and set on, but I'm going friend. with VP. Frank, man. VP. I don't know if I want to pick up this. It's, it's, this is aggression coming out VP. If you play two times at early, it's going to be food for the game. And that I think that the tools to back on early. Some revenge is really missed, though. For yeah, I've seen. And in, like Eric was talking about, singly carries the, game. And the other game, he gets aggressive he gets a bunch of times. Then you've got a bench flaner and limited comp potential at that point. Style, I'll certainly do it. Sounds like there's a slight network players are that to be sorted out underway here. VB have had no time. Neither. So, who do you think to take the series? Draft better here for P. EG, of course, known for acting very well that earlier drop Fnatic, but uh, they were able to back pretty EG's nice. Team on paper, uh, head before head, I want to say EG, mm -hmm. after a while, series are. They seem to pick on Slardar pretty strong, so the key note for them. I, you look at the Nanyan champ, the last big five that we saw, some tier one, and ban every game until game game five, the misery, and they up the game. All teams were pretty close most part, but yeah, Slardar, he's a scare. Yeah, I guess with EG. They're definitely the better team for more, somewhat more, but I don't know. Worried about games they have in seven, eight, five, and else. It's a tricky four. I mean, something that brought up very early, which is worth repeating. The forgiving for me, EG teams that it's very well over the course of an event, and with a one round robin, time to do that. Here, you slip up, you drop down to the bracket, you know, bracket picker. It's all right. There's bracket. There's bracket of GSL. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so, uh, some, uh, did you watch any of the others today? Uh, a lot of yelling. A earlier. little bit of P Nubian and a little bit of OG Vega. Yeah, they, who ended up winning this series? I, I went to win Vega. Ben, I've seen Death Prophet in like the past. This hero suddenly getting a little popularity. It's just a. Hmm. Not picks just a. <laughs> well, once the moon. Is, what, what, what? There, just like a, I want to push. Uh, obviously, he's, has a really long, also really good for bringer. Uh, the ghosts. So one of the reasons, like, oh, this is really like playable. Uh, you know, no. teams use it's Wraith Cane, uh, Razor. Yeah, used Razor, to be pretty popular. Lone Druid, do a decent zoom, but it will always be for those solutions. Music to both ears. I mean, alliances. Yet, uh, I know 
You were asking predictions in your and I got. I, I chose a lot. Besides me saying ski, did any believe in the boys? No, well, four just me. <laughs> I felt like hey, someone's got a ski. Months ago, I was ski. Months have been up and up. Their roster to me is one of the who, if they get it together with and just play the could make a, a big if. If, but now everyone's but if, so it's a happy time for the teams. Early day, she doesn't look. Let's, see. Let's play. Hold up. Like, uh, the rap horn sounds when we this here. It's hard really to get that though. And when you're right about to get into the game, there's a pause. You're just like, oh, let's play. I'm gonna do this. Ward here. Smoke here. Stands. You like. You feel really good your picks. And you're like, oh, get to this tri lane and dominating. Actually, let's just have a little sneak. FN gave an instruction. So now he's just. What hair? Can we go? What hair? I've been getting some camera shots. I feel really familiar. Yeah, some of the sport. <laughs> Go look here at the VP line. No smile. All right. So, uh, been benched here. Uh, they're going to fall with network issue, guys. So, and once we get the, we'll be back. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, to uh, fix out the and we might, uh, Blitz up. How about that? That sounds blitz. Paul, actually, sometimes you're the one to ask questions about. But I really, as somebody, here it comes. But they have to wear your own density. <laughs> <laughs> do you think our T's are strong enough in this game? I, I absolutely do. As a person, one sitting and having a straight line, uh, rather than going around, uh, I have to have to do. Is I I tease you how has the wherewithal? Yeah, Fair okay. That's a question. Any questions for the panel? Did you want to take? I didn't okay. realize we're. Like what's that? You used to hold the... It doesn't look that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wait to yours. All right. So what do we talk about to guys? <laughs> Obviously, Lee got it off the press. Um, with the head up, he's got no idea of how. He obviously, how do those fit into the way? They so it all comes down to than They got a base for him. I don't think it's going to be an issue. I, uh, Malin, the whole uh, pick up very early on, very good here in, in the first levels on this away with safe lane where get up early. And then you, you look a bit worried for the game when Virtus gets the to, to get The safe one, like with the gyro, like you go first. It's hard to shadow shaman at least like for level five because the hero is just the like, shack. It's hard to. It's kind of set up for the level. like the hex is mediocre too. And I'm sure V the same thing. I feel like they're aggressive trial. Like they did it as newbie. I mean crystal goal. It's good, but if you're if you're a little bit your levels, your aura, you rotate more. You'll Walk into your cover your carry. I feel like we try and carry for God. And, and it's very well, right? So, no, a little risk. Uh, but you can guess one rather than game three. Yeah, much more so in that rate screams. I mean, all three. Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. aggressive try to actually be here and then regardless of spirit with so because of the magic silent and then later on, well, I just really think. 
VP. If it's another team, they would be easy good. But they really do. It is when it is so, so familiar. Where geniuses for the last time we play a Shadow Shaman. Yeah. I think they're just going to take supports. Winter Wyvern. They're going to move. People, they're going to look. So, Captain Touch. That's going to be 50 magic hero of the Arctic Burn. They could kill a Shadow Shaman if they find him. They could kill a Crystal Mage if they find him. And then, off the map, the whole Avengers in is potentially setting up many kills on. Until Jaro gets. That magic is going to be a. It's going to. Out of position, basically one and a half, and can have block damage. It's very hard to believe that he's a successful pro all this deep in. Wow, thank you, man. Share that. And, Did you want to and they can in the dark server, Florida, which is a melee in the dark matchup. It's very aggressive. We're going to talk about musical chair. It's going to happen for sure. Yeah, for me, dark seer match incredibly well again. I've seen that again where running the dual lane, and if the safe lanes plus one sometimes simply can't get a on the dark seer because you just ion shells and you use this it kills you even better. you use an ion yourself there isn't very pre-level but going through the rest of trial lane something like a bid fails then pretty much all onto your d like if he does the game if he's down whatsoever then you just end like that was that like you haven't sit into the Ports, if they get leveled whatsoever, they provide anything. They're just kind of stuck where you carry Venge, Flash Farm, you can't catch up. So that's where I'm all hesitant to say that or the aggressive. On paper, it's perfect. On the though, lineup does all position punish on ports the same. You know, slot or a pain or win with with that on the levels. Those those could really. I didn't rinse, not so much. Okay, we are going to take a quick break. Come back, and we will have a function of that oh. game it's because, of course, it hasn't stopped. We haven't missed a thing. More words, them away very shortly. We'll see you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're live here. We're back for Virtus Pro versus EG, your winner's bracket, best of three showdown. I'm LD, of course. I'm joined here to my left by Merlini, and it's time, Ben, to hop in the game. The technical issues appear to be resolved. The teams are ready. Before the pause, the, team, the analysts were discussing an aggressive tri lane. You know, I mentioned to you, it's a little bit risky for VP to do that because they have very level-dependent supports, and it looks like for now they are not showing any indications of going aggressive. Three heroes down towards their side of the map. I mean, their lineup is inherently risky, though, so I think it's, it's fine to do that. You have to play to the strengths of your lineup, and you have to kind of limit the farm of the Shadow Shaman, so all in all, I would say it's a good play. Yeah, we did see DK Phobos make an early TP top, and then Lil as well uh, TP. Actually, I believe it was FNG TP bottom. So they got two wards up in the lanes. They also managed to D ward EG here in the aggressive lane, though it looks like it will just be Universe solo. I believe they run Sumail on the Slaughter once in a while, but uh, generally is Universe. He'll be playing it now. So he heads towards bottom, and he will be up against uh, a dual lane for now, at least, with FNG getting off the creep walk mid. So but we've already seen some TPs out to play some wards, and maybe they don't feel very confident in uh, laning versus a Gyrocopter as a tri lane. Like, that hero is really, really good, but at the same time, they do have Venge plus AA. Uh, so I'm actually a little bit surprised that they didn't run the aggro try. Yeah, I guess they want to focus on getting their early levels and, and the pulls off here. The, both of those supports really do benefit from their level 6. So it leaves DK Phobos in a 2v1 and, you know, actually a lane that has some kill potential if he gets caught by those shackles. The rocket barrage, plenty of follow-up damage. Yeah, but he's not getting anything. And yeah. VP have Just three heroes the zoning him out. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't need the shackles that Aether Shock does so much damage at level 1. But Universe, already well on his way to level 2. He's able to hit some creeps at least. He already has one CS, but Darkseer is... In, in a world uh -oh. of pain. Takes the rocket barrage here, doesn't have to surge just yet. In fact, doesn't have a single point of experience. Fear with the Aether Shot gets the first blood. And EG off to a nice start here. They may have gotten dewarded, but they will make up for it and then some. Tough situation for Phobos. The lane not really pushing at all uh, towards him, of course, with the Iron Shell spam. So he's going to struggle here a bit then. It really is. You do not want to rotate one of the supports up there to the lane. That's just going to cost your team so much in the early game. But you also don't want to give Shadow Shaman exactly what he wants in the early game. But now Shadow Shaman has boots and 500 gold. So he can actually get like a really early arcane boost if Phobos uh, leaves him alone. Yeah, and then you look at the other lanes. The, the Dragonite mid, of course, never really going to win his lane. But falling behind a bit early on here to Sumail in terms of CS. Generally what you do expect. And also taking that harassment, Sumail fishing for another power shot. That one won't connect. FNG now looking to secure that two-minute room, but interested to see if he does make the journey top. As you mentioned, maybe not ideal, but maybe required with Phobos. Still level one, only 62 experience, already two minutes in. And Peter has not even had to do anything. He's just been able to <laughs> quietly frostbite some big creeps and get his levels up, get that arcane aura up for his team, and... That Arcane Aura is going to be key for EG to actually put out a lot of pressure in their early game and delay the efficacy of the Eventual Spirit. Yeah, you so want to drag this game out later if you're EG. So far, the Venge for Illidan getting good farm here in the safe lane, but not really able to keep Universe out. So we look at the counterpart to the Darkseer, and Universe, despite the 2v1 that he's had, the bottom lane has really struggled to, uh, has not really struggled the way that uh, we've seen from the off lane here for VP. There's a bit of a wraparound brewing, Lil. Invis was not scouted, did manage to grab the rune, and now looks like he wants to make his move on Universe Bottom, but... Yeah, but he has six armor. I mean, They're gonna try with the stun here, the follow-up with the Arctic Burn, Splinter Blast coming through, dodges Ooh. the crush! Well played by Lil, as I'll juke the fish man, and down goes Universe, so... Very nice rotation there by BP. Evening up the score at 1-1, one to one, but still, he's getting his levels. Phobos, still that 62 experience, that's all he's got. Man, Lil's Winter Wyvern is just ridiculous. Yeah, making plays even before the hero truly comes into his own. Is... I think him and Sinico are the best Winter Wyverns. Yeah, both CIS players. Seeing a trend there, perhaps. Very impressive stuff. So, 21 and 4 for Sumail in the mid lane. The Gyrocopter quietly having free farm. And, you know, we talked about how the Venge can rotate early, but 
Gyro also here that can get involved. Generally not Arteezy's play style, but maybe something that the, the lineup calls for. So if he wants to play that aggressive TI5 era style Gyro, still pretty much in vogue. You have to. Could versus, be an option. Where's this sort of lineup? We see G going with an early Quelling Blade too. I'm not sure if that's a common pickup for him, but it's a, it's a rare thing for Dragon Knights overall. Uh, I guess maybe planning on clearing out some stacks later on, but... Not well, something, he's not something not they really have right fury. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not building a Battle Fury. Uh, I suppose once you get the uh, the range for the the level two range for him, you can go for those stacks though. Let's see now a Hastern up on FNG. Four heroes congregating mid, but there's a Sentry Ward here. Fear hanging back. Only level two, but looks like smoke. they're gonna find their opening. They move in now. Shackle not gonna latch, but doesn't seem like they need it as they get off the other shackles and power shot piercing through on G. And all of a sudden, FNG, not like this indeed, my friend, runs right into four. So not manage to cancel the TP in time, and it'll be a wow. twofer here for each. That was actually just a scare tactic by Ancient Apparition. You can't really get a counter kill unless they're like in really deep. They really needed the Winter Wyvern TP, but he doesn't have Cold Embrace, so none of those TPs would have actually worked out for them. But oh. not really uh, scouting out where uh -oh. the starter is. Phobo surge on cooldown now, and now going to get pummeled by Arteezy. Rocket Barrage lays it in, and... Oh, so much for the aggression early on from VP. It has been all EG all the way as they continue to mount their offensive here. Smell now grabbing his phase boots, the tower, taking decent chip damage, and the stacking continues in earnest. Meanwhile, for PPD on the Crystal Maid and everything. Absolutely everything going EG's way so Well, far. this is kind of why Slar is such a good pick. Like, in the offlane, okay, whatever, you get zoned out as long as you have stun. You can do things like this. You just run at heroes. You're kind of like Spirit Breaker 2.0. You're a better version. Yeah, and you can also take the Roche. <laughs> and you've got the uh, more reliable AoE stun to work with as well. So, on the back of that one, Universe, only four and a half. But uh, considering what the Darkseer is, he's still having a great time of it early on here. We'll see and how a smoke grab by the CM. G has died twice. That Radiant is super problematic for VP. He is the hero that you need at level 6 to siege towers constantly. Get that gold up, and without that, they cannot put out any pressure on the map. They cannot invade the jungle to limit Shadow Shaman and Crystal Maiden's farm. They cannot kill Arteezy at all, and... I don't know how they're going to get these uh, T1s down. This is a time of desperation for VP. Mm -hmm. Not often you say that at the six minute mark in any game. There was a window lineup with their early game, like, like oh, yeah. pretty significantly, too. Well, I guess it begs the question should they have gone aggressive? Should they have put more pressure here? Because the, the way they've set the lanes up does not seem to be working for them. So EG, they're expecting a move. Making a move on top now. They're going to find Arteezy. Can they finish him off? G gets off the stun. There's your Surge into Dragon Tail. Very potent combo. Something we've seen a lot from Beachy Gaming as well. G gets it done with the Breathe Fire. They've got another Surge and three. They could consider diving for this, but they've got to be worried about potential rotations coming in. They get the stun off. Now the double TP. PPD slowly lumbering forward on the Crystal Maiden, but G's tanky in the front lines here. Can they bring him down? There's the Shackle at two. Kept alive by the Cold Embrace, but the Dragon's dropping low. Phobos forced to disengage. G goes in. He does not manage to finish the domino. FNG, no boots up yet. At the same time, Universe Ebb's still low. Sumail going to work with Focus Fire. He'll bring down the h version. There's the swap forward for Illidan, and they return fire as Lil charges forward. A double TP again, it's up four TPs onto the top lane. EG, no, the Shackle denying Vernus Pro. They've overextended, it's gonna be Lil next here. Four heroes go down like a house of cards and Sumail struts all over their corpses on his way back to the fountain. Oh God, what was looking to me a turnaround moment for VP. It just It just took him too long to kill people. The respawns from EG and of course the excellent shackles by Sumail. And it's just, it oh, feels like it's too early to dive for that long. Well, it is if they had the Venger. If they had the Venger earlier, boom, heroes die before they can TB. They just Diving dive one by one. one. Looking for more FNG. Where are your boots, my friend? You're gonna need them. Oh, maybe kept alive here by Lil. Good cold embrace. Darteezy force back. Fear. Could potentially be in trouble as well. Slow down more and more. The two ice creatures will finally finish off that shaman, but the creeps counter FNG and will secure the kill. Nothing comes easy for VP this game. You all at the bottom rune. Engagement breaking out as G gets off the stun in universe, but he's tanky. But he's going to have the sprint available soon. In fact, he wants to move back in. The rotating in Sumail. The shackle shot level three available. He might have the angle here. Leads with the power shot. They swap him in. Sumail, oh, he could have had the shackle, but chain stun before he could get it off. Ends up getting burst down. VP, 
finally get a big kill. That ends a mega kill streak for Sumail. My Absolutely. god, he's already got one in 8 and a half minutes. They need Illidan in here early on in this fight. It's like, not only for his Vengeance Aura buff or just clean quick goes like that with the Nether Swap. They have to just rotate around their stun cooldown with a Dragon Tail, with the uh, Magic Missile, and just constantly get more and more kills on EG. You have to prevent them from getting their Blink Daggers on the Slardar as well as the Shadow Shaman. I'm not sure if Shadow Shaman is actually going Blink first, but regardless, you, you need to keep them down. Well, and the big winner here over the past four minutes or so has been Phobo. Suddenly level five, working on the mech. It's not going to be the fastest by any means, but he, he's gotten back in the game then. For a while, it felt like it was going to be a 4v5 matchup, as there is a smoke bottom. EG hunting. They're going to drop an Observer Ward here. It's wow. under a he, Radiant Sentry. FNG expected that smoke. His positioning in the tree line, along with the Observer and the Sentry, was just perfect to quell that movement from EG. Something you mentioned was the, the Dragonite pressure your tower. Look at this mid tower. It's taken 76 damage. It, basically nothing. <laughs> it's 76. <laughs> my god. I was like, oh, is it like, is it low? It, it, no, no. <laughs> it's taken so much damage then. <laughs> wow. They're going to move on fear now. He has been caught out suddenly. Low manages to hit level six. He's got the Winter's Cursed and they get the kill. Elodin diving deep wow. for that and one. But how did that not hit? If, if we shot that, it would have hit. Uh, I don't think Sumail needs any help with his shackle shots, let's be serious. <laughs> the Wonder Kid gets it done often enough. So they do fight a kill, but can VP transition this into anything more? Can they push the tower? Can they force the objectives? Their they... anti-push is way too strong. Like, call down and, like, power shot, you're going to line up for a shackle at some point, too. There's only so much threat you can have, especially without the DK. He does have his ultimate up right now. Let's right. see if they can... So, Aki the Winter's Curse here, though. Call down, huh? Baited out very early. We'll kill off the creep wave, but round two of this push. I mean, is it really really baited out? You you take out one whole wave, and that's like half the cooldown. That's not it's not stopping VP. They they still chip away. At yeah, the but tower. look at their other two lanes. Universe with the help of illusions will get a lot of damage on the mid tower. Fear just getting a free level six on the top. VP uh, were it, supposed to take a tower maybe like two and a half minutes ago. They, they went for the smoke back. VP trying to sneak their way around the tree line. Oh, yeah, I mean, with their line, it's, it's, it's obvious what they're trying to do here. <laughs> there's no... There's just nobody back. nobody home. Mid lane, I, not really being damaged that much, but being pushed in. The catapult now gets to work. Top lane can be in deny range soon, so a very spread out approach here from EG. They will lose the first tower, but in terms of overall tower health, it, it does feel like it's about equal, if not even favoring EG. So now that they're building mass armor on the side of VP, we see a HOT up on Avenge, along with the Aquila. Then they have the mech coming out on the Dark Seer. So, you know, trying to gear up for the onslaught of the Wind Ranger plus the Slaughter on top of the Mass Serpent. HOT, huh? Uh, normally he goes for like the early drums I've seen on Illidan. <laughs> the what, HOD uh, is, what do you make of the HOD here? It's pretty good for this line. I think maybe they want to. Mid lane. Moving on G. Looks like the crush is there, and down he goes. So anyway, back to the HOD. The HOD, it might be because their early game went so poorly, they might be looking for some more stacks in the mid game to help out the DK because like, they are not in the position that they wanted to be in. You'd expect them to be maybe like 3,000 gold ahead at this point if things go about expected for the early game. Instead, they're down in the hole about, uh, about 1,000. So because it doesn't work out, because you've only taken that one T1, because the Slaughter has had like a really fantastic time roaming, you have to go to plan B. Yes, you're like, game is somewhat subpar compared to EG's you don't you know you ideally you don't want to position one Venge especially versus a gyrocopter yeah but you make do with what you have you come into this sort of lineup you go all in and you have to prepare for the contingency and plan. they do have the big playmaking supports you hit a big ice blast maybe you get the winter's curse follow-up potentially they can take those fights later on with the vacuum as well as they will move on to PPD they come from above Lil We'll finish off the Crystal Maiden with the help of G. So they find another kill, only a Crystal Maiden. And again, the call down being dropped just to clear out the creep waves. But it does seem to be stymieing VP a bit. Uh, all, while that was all happening bottom earlier, uh, the tower was denied by the Ancient Apparition is he, top. Is he so not going to dominate the creep to take anymore. I, I, I theory crafted some uses for the HOD. Some next level uses like using the Helm of the Dark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, he doesn't it, have one, right? I don't it is useful that. for armor. I will give him that, but... That is... Well, then you could just get, like, a Vlad's or something at that point, if you just want the armor. I mean, you help your team. Do the value. Yeah. Uh, Illidan's all about numero uno. <laughs> They're moving on mid now. So they'll take the tower here. EG, no real counterplay top lane, but bottom lane, Sumail. Closing in on the Aghanim Scepter, and it's going to power shot out, what, 
few little creeps remained of the wave. Oh, are they, they going to force to Roche? It? This is really bold. If you fight into a Roche pit against Call Down and Serpent, they, okay, Serpent Wars are actually used. They, it's a level six Darkseer. They don't have a single point in the vacuum here. The mech's not done yet. I'll actually maybe flying on the courier. Indeed it is. So they're about to get the mech for this one. Oh but my gosh, this is very risky, Ben. Are they really committing for it? Arteezy's just waiting, prime to pounce. Finally, there's the Alpha Wolf. So there they does go. take over. Create power shot coming into the, the pit. Do they want to contest? PPD wants to have a gander, but they're not bringing the Shaman just yet. The ward's already committed top, so looks like EG content to just chafe away at BP here. Slowly try to whittle them down, but afraid to fully go in. And the mid lane slaughter also on the split push. EG are content to not really fight this one, but just be annoying. And they do get the tier two top for all that. Is they the bought so much time. Serpent Wars down. Like they bought like ha almost half the half the cooldown on mass Serpent Wars. Are with they the uh, power shot? They're they're experience. very reluctant here. And EG are if that cooldown comes off cooldown anytime soon, maybe they go back in. But finally, VP back into the pit. They'll grab the Aegis. Well, they were waiting. They don't want like a power shot steal. That would be really bad. Still, that's two towers for EG. They get the mid tier one. They get the top tier two. Meanwhile, mid lane, there's the swap, the stun on Arteezy, but Illidan finds himself in the middle of three heroes. Classic Illidan, does have the Aegis, backup is coming, maybe they get Arteezy, nope, he just TPs away. So an Aegis expended for essentially nothing there. And that was, uh, yeah, a blink dagger for fear on top of all the tower. It's almost a third tower, the bottom tower was almost killed off by Sumail before that happened. So EG not really looking to fight a 5-man unless all their ultimates are up. With, we're talking about like 20 seconds here. But now the Shadow Shaman has really come online. Like Fear is able to pressure this T3. Yeah, sure they get a kill on Sumail, but at the end of the day... Oh, uh, he was 30 gold short of the eggs. That's unfortunate. Objective gaming, man. Yeah, space created for Fear. It, it, it's very reminiscent of the way AUI 2000 used to play Shadow Shaman for Cloud9, where he would just constantly be split pushing in the trees, not really coming to fights, but he would get so much farm, he'd get the really fast eggs, and my god, that can be a game-changing item if you get it at a reasonable clip. Oh, they're making a play? Ooh, mm. that's close. So Slaughter Pink Dagger that has been scouted out, as well as Fear's Blink Dagger, and... Ideally, you, you want to be able to pick up these split pushers, so a mobility item like the Blink Dagger or the Shadow Blade is just a complete necessity on, on the Dragon Knight. Unfortunately, he also needs a BKB to deal with Shackle and all the gyros. Damage. I mean, you just look at the items they're building here. They get the Blink Dagger on the Dragon Knight. H Apparition is just in full-on poverty mode. The guy's on food stamps, for Christ's sake. And your Darkseer is very underleveled. So it, you mentioned VP not the best natural late game line. They're also not getting the farm or the items that let them take it late, particularly. Oh, Probably the Dominator Vend, but it's not like she's using it to actually stack her farm. Time to use those blinks. Four-man smoke at EG's Tier 2, heading uphill into the jungle. But look at VP's positioning again. They are ready for the smoke. And they're going to jump. Universe, there's the stun initiation. Shackle comes through. The call down's there. It's on two. The wall gets dropped, though, and EG are fighting into it. What a curse from Lil! He finds three, but do they have to follow up the war traps there? Finishes off Illidan. PPD able to squirm his way out of this one. And they all managed to hang on. It looked terrible for EG. G, but they just didn't really have the follow-up to that curse and they had already dropped the wards so that that was pretty good but again vp are just like extremely prepared for these smokes because their positioning for that is phenomenal that foresight from fng but the they're not getting punished in the end it's it's a bit unfortunate really i mean it's still like okay well now where do they have wards do they see us smoke like how are they always so prepared you have to wonder this if you're eg and I think it's a good move overall from EG just because they do have the better liking. They they can split push, they have better split push, they have better picks, but instead they're going for the unexpected play. VP does not expect this sort of Arteezy got five clipped by the ice blast here. I think he makes it out, but he will drop pretty low. Goes back. Already has the BKB now. They do have that Winter's Curse to lock him down, but pretty big spell to expend for the Gyrocopter. The Dragon Knight's a really good frontline tank versus this lineup, though. Especially once he gets his BKB. I mean, he has, like, 20 armor. So Amp's not going to put him in negative territory. And a hero like Gyrocopter, who's built a BKB first, is also not going to be able to put a dent in that. So I kind of like this. And on top of that, they have the defensive swap. And uh -oh. brace. Trying to deward FNG. Throws out a wild ice blast, but that won't amount to much. Ends up going down. Does get the deward, but it costs him his life. So let's see, VP just not able to make a move on the towers. Like EG are 
constantly pressuring their side of the map. They're not trying to trade. Instead, they're just trying to throw VP off their game, make them squirm around the map and go for objectives that they don't really want to go for and, you know, slow them down by making them not a unit as fun as five and they also don't have any vision in their own jungle right now this is actually a scary time for vp they have all these aggressive wards poised but they're not going to be able to get halfway there it's in fact eg who got the ward down now as they move in on the bottom lane the sentry ward placed earlier by lil is out of range ice blast gonna connect on two but they're just not really comboing the ice blast we haven't seen that big vacuum into curse into an ice blast all at once and as a result eg they just keep on punching their way forward do VP hold this tower? Do they try? The ward's already planted down. 400 health. They're going to try for the side swipe, but of course, this is scouted by that fresh landed ward. And in goes Universe. Finds the jump. It's unable to know. Very tanky. Even with the app damage, the shackle will connect. Do they have the follow up? Call down coming through. He can maybe swap himself away towards freedom. No, he gets put under for now. Unable to retreat. The BKB committed by Arteezy. Then to swap out. Like Lil, why don't you take the bullet, buddy? Secret save service agent down. And now PPD gets caught out by G, who blinks forward. But it's Arteezy on the back lines finishing off DK Phobos. Still G in a bit far. Perhaps the illusions coming to support him. He will finish off here. All the while, Sumail chipping and plucking away. In the end, he gets four. Arteezy barely clipped a power shot just off the mark, but Universe is on it. And in the end, EG pull out the five-man wipe. It took forever to kill the Venge, but he died, and eventually the rest all followed. Well, the reason it took them forever is because they were super wary of the positioning coming out. Like, they had Arteezy way up out in front with his BKB on, and then everyone else was split up so they couldn't get caught by even a two-man's winner's curse, I think, at that point. So, EG playing it slow, playing it safe, and they have survived the early game against VP. They are in position to take Roshan number two. They have deep ward set up. They are in a very commanding lead. At this point, VP going to have to pull some moves out of their arsenal to take this one away from EG's feet. Ben, are you regretting your prediction yet? Yes. <laughs> I thought they were going to aggro. I thought the early game was going to be better. I didn't think Shadow Shaman was going to be this successful. We're going to need to have stakes here for the, the consistent failures when it comes to the predictions. We'll talk about that after this At game. least I chose a side. <laughs> At least you did for something. Don't forget, guys, the panel, they said nothing. We got the bold moves here, well, even if they're wrong. But EG now, with that advantage, up to about 4,000 gold on the dire side. Rex Roshan coming back in a couple minutes. So we watch Fear calmly play out the game. They do have the advantage. It feels like they also have the late game with this dirt poor Ancient Apparition. The Venge carry that just can't easily keep up in terms of flash farm. And Sumail, of course, coming into his own now. Has the Ags on top of that 2,100 gold pocketed as well. We'll see what that next big damage item is. But eventually he's gonna get to the point where even the DK won't be able to stand up against him. It seems like all the VP all of VP's games that I cast where they run a position when Venge just like fail. <laughs> I was, I've I know that they, they win with they're it. They're three and five with it, I believe, coming into this game. I think I've cast like three of those and it's been it's been all losses. So my sample size has been like, why do they keep picking it? Every one that I've cast they've <laughs> lost. They have a zero percent win rate when they pick carry Venge and I'm casting, but you know, maybe I'm just jinxing but it's, it. But it's, it's risky, and you, you cannot be this far behind in the mid-game. Yeah, I mean, you think about what the hero brings to the team. It's single target. It doesn't flash farm. As a main carry, it doesn't really scale that well. It obviously makes your other carry a lot stronger, but the other carry is a Dragonite, a hero that's never going to dominate the lane. They did it. They also didn't prioritize trying to stack or play that like economy game. Yeah, I, thought, so. I thought they were going to switch, but no, nope, they're, all, they're all in on this. They're committing. VP are nothing if not... Oh, committed to the whole movement. EG pushing up in the mid lane for pressuring the tower. Meanwhile, VP split pushing, still looking for the tier one top. Actually surprising to see it still up, but it's EG with the faster push, the Shaman, as well as the Focus Fire, easily bringing down this tower mid. Sumail getting that blink dagger, so even more initiation and mobility for him. The Sardar Force Staff comes out now. EG just wrapping up the mobility in general. There's a nice blast, will fly out here. Meanwhile, just call down in the waves constantly. The game plan is clear at this point. EG, they just want to play the economy game. They want to trade farm. They are in no hurry to try to close this one out. In hindsight, though, PPD's draft was actually quite 
excellent because he knew that VP were going to five man a lot. So what you need is a mix of wave clear and team fight. The wave clear coming out from Ventral Spirit, or sorry, the Wind Ranger, as well as maybe like a Crystal Nova from uh, Crystal Maiden. You need a mix of team fight. That's where the gyrocopter and the shadow shaman comes in. And of course, you need to win your lane. RTZ. Gonna Hello, RTZ. Directly on top of the wall. Gets back back. He's probably not even going to bother with the BKB here. Wouldn't have helped him. And down he goes. A nice pick. It does end a dominating streak, but also feels like they need more of that if they want to keep up with EG. Yeah, EG has the tools necessary, like the, the CM for early game, and of course the gyro and the wind ranger uh, for the late game, and then of course the team fight uh, for the mid game. So all in all, VP they still have to pull some shenanigans. Ideally, be able to take down the Roshan number two, but. Slowly but surely, the Vengeful Spirit is starting to taper off, and VP's not going to like that one bit. Yeah, I mean, you look at the item progression here in Illidan, he's fallen behind three of the other cores, including his own Dragonite. It, it just oh, speaks this, to the nature of the hero. This Observer Ward has just killed them twice, though. Yeah, they're going to find it now, but still, VP scouted out in their movements, and it's given a lot of freedom here. As Fear confidently blinks and bottom, he's also picked up a four step. The man is practically even with the carry Venge at this point. Sitting, and he's one in four, mind you. It's not like he's getting a lot of kills, but he just keeps on farming. Already up to 79 CS and, what, three towers at this point, perhaps? Yep, they, they really can't push out the lanes. Well, for, for now, EG, it seems like they want that Aegis bin, and they also just respect VP's high ground. Sure, maybe they're, they're looking like they have the weaker late game, but you go into the blink vacuum curse if the AI Ice Blast is there. Things could get ugly real There's quickly. There's no need to push high ground. They have better late game. Yeah. Right. So they and they, and they recognize. They that. just need to wait. They they win one more team fight. They take ages, and then after that, you feel comfortable. You can take more risk. You can you know split push out. Oh, if they're over here, we can like use the ages and whatnot. But until then, you play a really tight ship. You have all your teammates together so that you know slaughter can help if someone else gets jumped. Jaro can jump down his call down in case uh, you know slaughter gets jumped. They're in a pretty good position right now. Well, they saw the Ice Blast, and immediately that's the cue to jump. EG getting the up damage up the Roche, probably dropping in under 10 seconds, or roughly around that amount as he quickly falls. Illidan, he's going in for this. He's going to commit the Wave of Terror. Oh, it's too late, and now the turnaround. Call down, zoning everyone back, even though it doesn't really connect. Illidan turns, gets up the stun. There's the curse on two. This could be an okay fight for BP as they search forward onto Sumail, but he's the Aegis Carrier. They'll drop Phobos as well. Three down. Looks like it's about to be four. G tried to man fight the world, but eventually the dragon crashes down to earth and into rockets in a hail of bullets he too will fall four for nil and they got the aegis as well as the roche kill i believe did have to buy back there on the crystal bay it's actually four for one but still big win there for eg eg has been so proactive this game and in what they've done in terms of just like pressuring VP from the get go, forcing the Venge to come to them because like their mid lane is losing out so hard due to the slaughter ganks, uh, you know, blinking into Roche, making VP fight into the Roche pit as opposed to what happened the very first time, the aggressive smokes when they have the better late game. And overall, the strategic maneuvers this entire game has just been one step ahead of Virtus Pro. It, it really feels like they had a very clear game plan. Very early, they started with the split push. It wasn't like, oh, we're losing? Okay, now let's change up our game plan. It was They had it from the beginning. They stuck to it with the economy game. The Crystal Maiden was never pressured in the jungle. It's generally not a hero you worry about farming, but it just freed up the lanes for the other heroes, and mm. EG took full advantage. Well, Ben, where do they go from here? When is that magical time where EG look to break the base? They're about to get a Desolator on Wind Ranger now. Is this go time? Or is this nah, farm you time? Okay, you see what VP does. If they split push, you gank them with blinks. If they five man, you split push and wait for them to mess up and eventually realize that they're getting out farmed and then split push and then gank them. So you pretty much wait for a kill or two unless you want to wait for the third rush, but you know, that's in 10 minutes time. So you play it by ear at this point. You're very comfortable with your lead. You, you force the enemies to get BKBs, which is great. You focus fire, you amp, you drop your Shadow Shaman uh, wards, you right-click war with Gyrocopter. Like, they are they are going to win the BKB wars. So you're, again, you're not worried at all. They definitely don't seem like they have any sense of urgency. It's, it's rather VP or grouping up now. Yeah. It's five. EG's they drop a sentry. smoke, though. Look at Peter's vision. He, like, dropping reserve wards, trying to hide in the trees to pop the smoke. 
And that's one of the ways VP can get, can get back into the game. It's like a chain feed because they have like really low cooldown stun. So you blink stun one, hope someone else comes and try and help them out and, you know, get one, two, three, four kills that way. And then ideally that'd be around like a third Roche timing, but you know, you take what you can get. Well, now they mosey towards top. They dropped that sentry, I think, hoping to find an aggressive EG war. Didn't find it. And on the back of that, maybe reluctant to smoke, but EG have no such qualms. As they march down into the river, two minutes to go here on the Aegis. They're going to rotate towards mid now. Lanes are about at equilibrium, directly, diagonally across the river. EG... You know, too many heroes have been missing forward. on the map right now. They, they have to be prepared for this. If they lose this fight, it is almost game over. FNG could get caught out here. They're coming in, looking, the smoke's about to break. Do they find them? No, oh, they do, but everybody pops their BKBs in time. They burst down Universe, killing him off the bat. That could be huge for VP. Now turning their attention towards RTZ, Illidan and G, trying to beat him down on their own, and they will commit a curse here as well. RTZ's down. This could be the fight for VP. Three, make it four. It's all up to Sumail, and well, he's trying. He's still got the just the Desolator not yet complete, and he says, screw it, man. I'm out. See you later. Where is he going? He might die twice here. TP after TP stalking him and hounding him as well as the Wyvern. Sumail is dead at the enemy tier 4. He might well die a second time. Good luck getting out of here, Sumail. You're the wonder kid, but you're not that wonderful. Down he goes again. A full five-man wipeout. Is wow, VP back crazy. then? Yes, after that, certainly. You do not expect a five-man smoke with the Aegis to go that poorly for you, but they actually didn't have the right heroes going at the same time. Slaughter blinked into two BKBs, and then they had the Wind Ranger isolated, but she's the one with the Aegis. You want her to go in first, get a shackle, and then nail one or two heroes right off the spot, but what ended up happening was the fight was so split up, the supports were able to utilize these trees in the left side, and just no one was able to actually kill anyone on EG. That's crazy. That was a 6,300 gold swing. Wow. And that is basically the entire lead. Just destroyed in a matter of oh, seconds. I, they, they probably didn't expect the BKB up on Ventral Spear. I think that was actually... Like, they blinked in on her. On her. They tried to stun her. The BK, her BKB came up, and then they're like, oh crap, what do we do now? It, it was also nighttime, and I, they didn't see the two heroes to the south, which were the easier kills. Uh, so they ended up jumping to the north instead, and those uh, were the BKB heroes. What yeah. an incredible 5 by VP. Again, their smoke anticipation has been on point this game. My god. And now they, they feel confident enough to pick up a gem on AA, secure them some more map control, and yeah, they're right back in this game after that. All of a sudden, they picked up a gem here in the Ancient Apparition. Ice Blast oh is going to scout out fear. God. Ah, you sneaky little bugger. Take that. G will bring him down. Another pick as the momentum just continues to slowly shift. Well, rapidly at first, and now just continuing to trickle up. Yeah, EG has, has no wars around the map. You know, they desperately need the Slaughter BKB. That's, yeah, that, to me, is a really totally do. different fight if he has it. I can see how the support staff like can be pretty useful versus like their mass stuns, especially like the DK long duration stun, but you have to get a BKB. If you blink and they BKB on your initiation, your slaughter is instantly gone from the fight. And they all of a sudden have an assault caress now complete, an additional plate mail here for Phobos, probably building towards that Shiva's guard. We'll They're see. missing a solar. They really need a solar on the side of VP because yeah. they have so much single target from EG. Solar would be incredibly good for them. Actually, a bit surprised they don't have one, but yeah, definitely I mean, something they'll be building towards at some point is, oh, RTZ, he's got a BKB here, but they have the Winter's Curse available if he tries to get away as well as the swap. They'll swap him back in. RTZ fighting against the world on his own, and down he goes again. VP, where earlier the ganks all failed, now they succeed time and again. This game is not only even, but it's about to be a VP game the way it's headed. Well, all it took was like one more fight, I think, from EG to, to seal the deal, but... Death it's just the man, nature so. of their team fight. They're such a they're such a scary five man lineup if they get the right the right initiation. Finally Sumail gets the Deso. Man, he's really slowed down. He needs BKB. They have stuns. They have a lot of stuns. And they have what, like, to me, one of the scariest things in the game, which is the dra oh, Dragonite jumping on top lane is going to find out Universe here. Ice Blast coming through hot. And we'll connect Universe. Kited for days and nights and will drop as well. Slardar, does he have the buyback available? He does not bend. Only about 80 gold short, but dead for 50. That's going to cost them a tier 2, if not more. Let's see. The Roche Timer is going to be really important here. If they can do it before the Slaughter respawns, that's going to be huge. 
Maybe they can actually force out uh, wards, ideally, I would think, from the Shadow Shaman on the high ground. But, okay, where's this creep? Where's that HOD creep? <laughs> uh, I don't know if he has one up right now. Not seeing anything on the mini-map here. Oh, yeah. Instead, VP are going to check out the Ancients. Let's see how long it will be until Roshan respawns. About to hit the minimum threshold. But it could still be a while, and... Interestingly, it looks like our Dark Seer not going Shiva's here, but just oh, grab the himself the fake repel. back from VP. EG has no vision inside the pit. They have no idea that VP is not there. But EG are just terrified without their precious Slardar. Yeah, but they're like, well, if Roshan responds, we're just gonna have to give it up for free, and it's Aegis Cheese, and then we're gonna be forced to use our buybacks. This, this kind of a psychology might force them into a poor maneuver of just checking the Roche pit. Like, so we have to fight him there. And they have no smokes available for five minutes, not to mention, as you said, they're in the dark. Time to just huddle up in the base and pray for the sunshine to break. The one thing that's going EG's way right now is that the lanes aren't, push, aren't pushed out, so it's very obvious that VP are kind of waiting up this hill. VP could play this waiting game. They cannot leave the rush pit for that long because EG can also just smoke in and, you know, amp and then drop boards and Roshan is down and they get the HSG. So VP, hey, they have to retain control of this area. Oh. Take down this T2, control the secret shop. Sumail's got to be careful here. They've got the surge into the Dragonite Blink. They also have the swap available. He will sit all the way back perched on the ramp, the bottom lane, but this means VP take a freebie. Roshan looks like oh, just about exactly a minute out now. Oh, that's almost the MKB up on G. That's that's also really bad for Sumail, because Sumail does not have, like, if he blinks in his shackles and gets BKB, he is dead, win run or not, once that happens. Yeah, he's, he's almost got to bait his team, and that's where your Slardar needs the BKB, so he can be the one that goes in first, dies, but at least tanks up some of the damage. Universe very close now. Looks like he will have the gold for it, and not going to save for buyback, just grabs it right away. Such an unfavorable Roche spawn for VP. Now the the time has come for the lanes to be so pushed out that VP oh, has to defend, and they actually are at risk for getting picked. It's one of those moments where you're just like, oh, if only he knew that Roshan is so close. But as you said, they are backing off now, and the last slider to grab the BKB of four staff but really good also play from Lil. EG. Look at Lil's position. He's not like going up and attacking the creeps. He's just dumping his uh, splinter blast from as far away as possible. Blink dagger at the ready to make sure that he does not give a free kill. If he gives up a free kill here, they pressure the T3. Immediately VP have to TB back and then EG gets Roche. It's super important that he does not get picked off right there. But EG are too scared to pressure that lane. They sit back. VP will well, be the ones to scout With his positioning, they're too scared. If he were right clicking creeps and being careless, then yes. And I mean, just look at the dire vision. This is atrocious. One of the worst vision scenarios I've ever seen EG have, to be honest. They are totally bottled I up. I still cannot believe EG got wiped at that fight with the Aegis. That it was, was, it was I feel like it was almost entirely the nighttime as well as just he blinks onto the freshly yeah, unveiled that, BKB that for the event. crazy. Bit of bad luck, really good execution by VP and... Really good positioning by yeah. them too. Like, hiding in trees like, oh, okay, smoke pop, oh, it was DC. I was like, what? wait, no, their supports are in this tree. What? No, my smoke popped over here. It was just an, a mess of confusion. Well, oh, Roshan gets massacred. VP, grab it. And Illidan will be the man to claim the Aegis, so now you've got uh, a free swap initiation, and you'll come back for round two. Even if you go down, ready to rock and roll again. But now, EG, they have this uh, lineup where they don't have any defensive support. Generally, you know, it's like a Dazzle, Winter Wyvern, even Undying, I would say, with a Soul Rip is decent. But if someone gets Blink stunned and they're not facing towards the Fountain, they're just dead. They're sieging. They're moving in. Illidan, uh, just right up on the high ground. Come at me, he says, and he's about to get another item here. The Mantle style deploy just pops it right away. There's the crush. Doesn't really care, though. Illidan, very durable. He swaps Artesi and baits out the BKB. Uses his own as G kites him a little bit. G has his own BKB. He's going to pop it fairly early here. They have to get a kill while these BKBs are activated, or they're going to need to back out, and they jump onto PPD. Low from the Ice Blast. The curse there on Universe to hold him in position. G's very tanky, although he has been shackled for now. And then Sumail locks him down, tries to finish him off, but there's the cheese to heal him back up. Kept the life for now. Artesi is finally going to go down. They've lost three for this. They need to spam those vibes as quick as possible. Illidan still has that extra life to work with. Comes back now, Sumail. Low on mana. Yet, EG do hang on, but it cost them heavily. The buyback committed and multiple deaths there. That was they a won't sick lose the Rex yet. For Lil. Oh my goodness. On the BKB Slaughter with a Wind Ranger in range to proc the Desolator on him, so he drops. 
That was crazy good. They still keep on sieging here. That's after it all. Fear jumps in, almost finished off immediately. And Illidan, he's just too tanky here with the cold embrace from the Wyvern again. Negating almost all of uh, Sumail's damage. They charge forward onto Sumail. They're really committing for the win or They will manage to bring him down. Insta buyback. Lil heading on for ages. Arteezy, this could be a dieback here. He's got to get the hell out. It's Sumail who buys back as well. Does turn the fight. Brings down Illidan. Oh my goodness, G. This is not your base, my friends. <laughs> so far, so deep. He'll die as well, but everybody and their mother has committed a buyback at this point now. Wow, that was like. a sick Manta dodge from Vengeful Spirit. Fear blinks in, tries to go for the Hex on the Vengeful Spirit, then pops his Manta, and then Shadow Shaman is out in no man's lane without a PKB. That was crazy good by Virtus Pro with the plays. Bottom lane, Phobos taking a punish, some punishment here, but he does Greaves up, continues to retreat. That's the Lotus Orb. So VP Ben, they wipe out four die, but EG had to blow the buybacks there and some pretty important heroes. So the end result of the fight was basically an even net worth exchange. It was like 110 gold discrepancy overall. But EG hold the high ground. They get, they fight their way through the Aegis as well as the Cheese. They do not lose the tower or the Rex. Yet. VP almost take down the T3 and they kill Gyrocopter twice. That is just incredibly devastating. I think VP managed to spend their gold too before they died. We see Dragon Knight with the MKB already, and of course, Ventral Spirit oh, with moving the on mid. Sumail Manta. with the quick jump in here finds Phobos and the deletes gem. Phobos. That's the gem as well. No big pick. The old man grabs it, and he will scamper back. But what is Lil going to buy with his 3,300 Refresher. gold? Refresher's pretty good. It's, he stays, seems like he's saving for something pretty hefty here. I could have started to buy some components. Uh, anything else that comes to mind for you besides a Refresher? Solar? I, it feels like they just don't want a Solar crest. Yeah, Solar I think would be might be better suited on the Eventual Spirit, though. Or the AA, but AA is probably likely going to build a Scepter next, so... Hex could also be decent, but I think Refresher is a little better because the the BKB Pierce. At the 40 minute mark now, just clipping it. You can take a look at the graph and I, it does really tell the story of this game. About a 15,000 gold swing. And it all began with that one five-man wipe. EG had all the confidence. The Aegis up on Sumail basically didn't get to do anything the entire fight. They lost the starter off the back. and They didn't drop a ward down during yeah. the fight, too. You'll see that often like during a nighttime like smoke. Like right over here or something. Yeah, you, you want, like, it, it, well, as soon as smoke falls, boom, drop a ward, and then you have vision of the supports that you need to blink on and kill immediately. Because they didn't have vision of the heroes that they needed to, they just lost that fight miserably. But, you, you know, you can, you can understand where they're coming from. They had a couple of smokes before, and and they're like, wow, okay, BP were positioned. If they weren't perfectly positioned, they would have just destroyed them, and EG banked on that chance. Do you have a favorite here for late game now? With the way the game's developed, or BP you... has better map control right now, and they can get the next Roche and then just throw their lives at EG while they have to waste buybacks on the side of evil geniuses. So They did lose their gem, though, and EG have managed to get some wards up. Yeah, I think they can buy another gem, though. It shouldn't have been cool should down be by now. Yeah. soon, or uh, it is, in fact, ready. And on top of that, they have like a Lotus Orb. If, like, God forbid, a Shackle reflects on a Sumail, that's gonna, that's just ownage because he's not gonna have BKB. It also takes off Amp, it takes off the Frostbite, um, I took out the Hex from Shadow Shaman. That's and here a, we go. That's actually really powerful. Another crucial fight. Let's get ready to rumble here. EG rotating down the bottom lane. Who gets the jump this time? Crush on the two, off the bat. Universe engages, and the Shackle's there as well. And they didn't really match the combo, but now the back into the curse, trying to turn the fight, but it's with out the Dragonite, no buyback, Illidan low, they're scrambling on the retreat, it's EG who get the jump this time, and they want Lil 2, trapped in the trees, only a matter of time now with the shackle there, it's gonna be three heroes biting the dust, their combo just Did they lose another late. gem, or that was that Fierce gem? They, I think it was Fierce don't gem. think they, no, they, they didn't have one, that Wow, that was, I think Lil was actually far too slow on the cold embrace, you have to have the cold embrace on a stun into shackle target, first off, great jump by Sardar, getting two heroes to let up lead to the perfect shackle shot but the winter's curse plus the cold embrace has to come out on the dragon knight immediately so that he can pop his bkb and then turn around on these heroes so looks like vp do not have a buyback on the dragon knight only going to have one on the winter wyvern and his dreams of a refresher are going to be delayed uh, i guess in good news he, he didn't get to use his ultimate so should eg push and he gets back he'll at least have it there but eg aren't really willing to push they force out the one buyback not the most devastating hero and it does slow down whatever Lil's next item is a bit, though. Only 2,500 gold now. 
Still nothing on the courier. <laughs> like a Phobos with his casual ROB. <laughs> we need armor, guys. <laughs> Valley. I, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a slide our game, you know. He needs armor. Oh, Vlad's is good. Yeah, they, they do have the Akil already, but Vlad's eventually, like you said, in the works here. It's a but where's the game. solar? Why? Why? You want solar plus AC plus Vlad's. That is the I, I, on top of you know regular armor items on your heroes like Shiva's guard and HOD. But there's but, actually still no MKB on EG because Artizi died back, yeah. so he lost a ton of gold. And Sumail, he's close to that next damage item, but has not quite gotten there and doesn't really want to get caught without buyback. And he might want BKB instead. Yeah, he's really debating it right now, and uh, it is going to be a BKB. Yeah, so th yeah, this would be like the the evasion is just incredibly good at this point in the game. So much value from that, but yeah, I don't I don't know if they're going to commit to that. I did see Lil pick up one item. Is that did he sp he spend his Christmas? gold on another gem? A Lil? Uh, yeah, that's the that's the second gem. So okay, yeah, they they need another gem. Gonna be on cooldown for, sure. for some time. This next Roshan is crucial. Definitely need to protect this one. They give another one away to EG and that map control battle. It's been tug of war all game. It may go back directly the other way. And EG has kind of uh, skated by the last five minutes where Artis didn't have buyback. So that was like one of the most trying times for them in this game. A pair of illusions now. Gonna scout through the jungle a bit. See what's going on. See so Universe slowly working towards his assault caress. The armor wars continue in earnest here. He's gonna finish off a couple of ancients en route. Yeah. But that what happens when VP isn't perfectly positioned for a smoke from EG. Like someone's going to get caught with a stun and a shackle, and then it's up to it's up to Lil to kind of salvage the fight with Cold Embrace and Winter's Curse. And if he doesn't get a perk going off, VP will get obliterated. It can go the other way if the Dragon Knight's the one that gets the jump, but he doesn't have that AOE lockdown the way a, a Slardar does. Yeah, maybe they can get like a Blink uh, vacuum wall too but i feel like it's pretty dangerous to lead with your dark seer if you if you don't if you don't have vision mm. anyway that's the team fight if you whiff it yeah i mean at least you can maybe like throw up a lotus orb too that's True. where the preparation comes in you have to have time to pop these defensive spells oh they have the harpy stormcrafter that's actually a really big deal that nighttime vision is op man oh it's about to don't be... let it die <laughs> it's about to be dead as hell <laughs> ppd <laughs> says get the hell out of my house and oh, kills it off so now Roshan, two minutes, maybe a minute and a half or so to go. They need to slay Artizi's creep inside the Rosh pit so they don't know what, when it's up. They don't have that great of uh, ways to scout it out. Power Shot is the best that they have, but that's not global. A, a proud, prized, regular ranged creep, but he's very buff. He's been working out. It's not been scouted just yet. VP swinging down towards the pit. You see them VP making the same play that they did also in... Also uh, mobilizing. They will deward here. They're gonna jump though, Sumail off the bat, the BKB's come out, but he got the two hero shackle. Can he focus anyone? Bring them down, they are gonna curse. Committed onto Sumail, the Ice Blast coming through. Illidan taking a lot of damage here in the midst of the fight, but they do finish off the Wind Ranger. No buyback, and now G goes in and goes hard in the paint. The buyback comes out of the slider, but they need that firepower from Sumail. They just don't have it. It's about to be four downs. Buybacks, buybacks everywhere, you low PPD. Will TP out. Okay. The Gyro team, and the Slard are committed. Lil made the plays that fight. He had the cold embrace on the Dragon Knight that guy shackled, and then he turned around with the Winner's Curse. He was prepared. He realized what he did wrong in the fight before and just completely outplayed EG. And EG just did the same initiation that they did before. They're like, well, it worked last time. It should work this time. But unfortunately, Roach is right about to respawn. So this EG is... can't fight without Wind Ranger. Uh, and dead for almost a minute here. This is a long death timer for Sumail. G nope. is just like unstoppable though during dragon look at his armor right now <laughs> the guy's a 47 armor and on top of that you can't like, run he away shrugged, he, he laughs at amp damage at this point he crushes the bkb too yeah. like you get slowed you, who needs a scotty when you have dragon form slow and you have mkb so wind ranger can't use the bkb bkb wind run so that's an aegis she is going to the way of vp ideally you want one on the ventral spirit but maybe one of the supports will be kind enough to feed him a cheese uh Yes, delicious. Little Gouda, mozzarella. All right, back into the pit. VP are going for the Aegis, the Cheese as well. Looking to close out this game, or at least take that first lane of Rax. Amazing that we're almost 48 minutes in with a Shaman as well as a Dragonite, with an Ags even up on the Shaman. And this DK, massive, and yet still been. Yet to see that first lane of Rax claim, let alone a tier three. But this could be the difference maker now. Aegis will be grabbed. They give it again to Illidan. The cheese more valuable on the dragon. Wait, how did he get course. there so fast? What in the heck? Huh? Didn't he just respawn? 
<laughs> um, no, no BOTs. I guess yeah, I guess he ran. Must have TP in a walk. I, th I I did not think he'd be in there in time for the cheese or for the Aegis rather. But ideally, you want cheese on Dragonite and Aegis on Ventral Sphere. But I thought it was gonna switch around because he wasn't there. But this T3 is just in, it's in the night range. Down the bottom lane, round two. Let's see if this one's more successful here. Buybacks entirely lacking for the die. Only the crystal made in with one. And now the tier three goes down. Illidan proudly grabs, grabs the last hit. And now Sumail gonna engage, commits a shackle here. But G's ready for this. He turns out of the Wind Ranger, back the hell away. And Illidan's kept alive again by the Cold of Brace. There's the curse as well, keeping the fight going smoothly for BP so far. And now the Ice Blast up back. The wall, BP! They really found every last hero. PPD down. No buyback on the giant. It's turning into a massacre here in the Dire Base. The one buyback that is available. That's the Crystal Maiden. It will be used. VP playing it safe, playing it slow. A shackle attempted by Sumail. They're going to jump back in, but now the DK comes in. He gets off the cheese. Universe likely to be next. Down he goes as well. PPD crumbles, and Sumail runs, but he can't escape the wrath of G. He really kills them all in the end. And VP, an incredible comeback here. We'll take game wow. number one. That is a VP I have not seen in weeks. That was incredible. That, that was the up. VP at TI that what? that just dominated when you least expect it. Took out Secret in the lower bracket. Impressive stuff, then. That was crazy good from them. Well, no, they've cast off the shackles of Virtus Throw now. Now they are Virtus Pro. And maybe take a page out of the CSGO team's book, because that looked like the plow all of a sudden. Just took, got taken out of the, the tool shed and went to work. <laughs> My goodness, what a performance.